And it's very rare when you get to share coconut water with the finance minister. Thank you so much. And Imran Tidana went talking to us to CNN News 18, first of all. Because, you know, um, the perception which the BG, the DMK and the, the Congress party tried to build up yesterday also when they had that rally of Rahul Gandhi as well as DMK, chief, the C chief minister of Tamil Nadu, was that this is a territory which cannot be breached by the BJP. Yet Mission South is something which is very integral to the Prime Minister's ideology, thinking and yours as well. Your thoughts. You think this is a bastion which can be breached and will be breached? Undoubtedly, it can be breached. You saw the momentum in the ground. You saw how people are responding today. And yesterday, I was in some other parts of Tamil Nadu. I was in the central part, uh, Chidambaram, which is a reserved constituency, just as Abhinashi, which is a reserved assembly part of Nilgiri, which is also uh, Nilgiri parliament is a reserved constituency. Similarly, I also went to Tanjavur which was affected by cyclones. I visited at that time, and the candidate, BJP's candidate, was also somebody who worked in the ground. So the momentum is largely because of the way the large attention which Prime Minister pays to Tamil Nadu, develops it, also brings in the defense corridor, makes sure, you heard all the women talk today yeah. about how in their village, most of them have got toilets, they've also got the cooking gas, they are very clear that the house itself is being built by uh, Prime Minister's Avas Yojana and so on. So not only that Prime Minister at his level is giving attention in the larger space, policy space, but also in the ground execution uh, in the le at the level of the households is all obviously seen. So the myth that has been created that a national party cannot survive in Tamil Nadu was uh, sincerely not attempted to breach by the Congress party. The Congress party has absolutely forfeited its right in Tamil Nadu and is playing only a second fiddle to one of the DM, one of the Dravidian parties, but mostly with the DMK. So, as a national party, Congress party is not able to stand up on its own and say what is in the interest of Tamil Nadu and what is in the interest of the country. Whereas BJP took that approach, saying if the entire country has to develop and we should have reached the level of the third largest global economy, we need to have every state of India develop. And that is why the attention given to Tamil Nadu is purely, even without an MP from here, PM's message is, I want every state to develop, so should Tamil Nadu. Well, the, the criticism which comes in from the Dravidian parties is that BJP is a North party. It's trying to impose its language, its culture. Would you, as someone who belongs over here, want to issue a clarification on that? 100%. And that is part of the Dravidian myth-creating effort. They always look at North Indians, Hindi, all over the part of this country. And in this country's history, Tamil Nadu's contribution is not a property of any one party. The DMK cannot say it is us who kept up the Tamil absolutely discriminatory, differentiating, and a separatist ideology is the Dravidian ideology. And as a result, you find them always speaking of North versus South, Hindi versus Tamil, or, you know, these outsiders versus versus local. And they don't, I mean, they like to tell, keep, it, keep it within themselves as though they're the arbiter of who's a native Tamil, as opposed to who's come from outside. These are very clear wedges which they drove into the Tamil society. People are clearly rejecting it. And it's for all this, they're not even democratic. They're highly dynastic. It's only their family which is seen in politics. Common Tamil people are not seen in DMK's party. And the Kachaji issue, which again has been dismissed by the chief minister plus the Congress party as a diversionary tactic by the BJP. The national interest is not to use their words, the tekedari of the BJP. National interest may not be the tekedari of BJP, just as I'm trying to say that Tamil Nadu is not the tekedari of DMK. But what is your contribution to the national uh, uh, cultural uh, heritage or national, uh, national spirit of nationalism? When Kachitivu was given, and it is not for nothing that we have raised this issue, when Kachitivu was given, 
द तमिलनाडु चीफ मिनिस्टर देन चीफ मिनिस्टर करुणानिधि न्यू फुल्ली अबाउट इट बट ही डिन इन्फॉर्म द पीपल ऑफ तमिलनाडु ही कैप्ट इट टू हिमसेल्फ एंड नॉट इवन अ प्रोटेस्ट सिम्बॉलिक प्रोटेस्ट वॉज हेल्ड दैट वॉज द ट्रूथ देन बट वाई डिड वी रेस इट नाउ दैट द फैक्ट इज गॉट टू बी ब्रॉट आउट एंड एज ए सेड डी एम के इज मोस्ट एक्टिविटीज आर बाय मिथ क्रिएटिंग क्रिएट एन इम्प्रेशन इन द माइंड ऑफ द पीपल विच विल बी फार फ्रॉम द ट्रूथ बट मिथ मिथ क्रिएशन कच्छिव्यू इज ऑल्सो सच मिथ विच हेज बीन क्रिएटेड दे गेव इट अवे नोइंगली एंड इन स्पाइट ऑफ दैट दे वुड से फॉर द लार्जर इंटरेस्ट ऑफ द कंट्रीज कॉस वी जॉइन विद मिसिस इंदिरा गांधी एंड गेव इट नो 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 दे वुड लाइक टू कीप इंदिरा गांधी एंड द नॉर्थ सेपरेट एंड से नो वी आर नॉट एंग फॉर इट but why don't you protest then one second even worse tamil fishermen have been fishing in that area based on the traditional right to fish whereas what has happened is after kachatibu which was given away the traditional fishing rights have also been diluted considerably that to even till today you are not able to resolve the fishermen's issue with sri lanka is because you muddied the water even then by giving away or diluting the traditional fishing rights so kachatibu second you are talking about national versus tamil they don't speak for the national they don't even speak for tamil look at the way when dmk was an alliance partner with the upa the minister then taking care of forests and uh, whatever went uh, ahead with banning jallikattu in the name of cruelty to animals jallikattu is an inherent part of this tamil nadu you were a party to that upa your government came up with banning jallikattu you were an alliance partner dmk you didn't protest again so what are you talking about tamil interest or national interest neither are you a takedar of tamil interest nor are you a takedar of national interest jallikattu was restored thanks to the honorable prime minister because he fought in the supreme court and got it as a cultural symbol of tamil nadu a couple of other questions you must have had a look at the congress manifesto as your party is getting ready to present its manifesto it talks about right to work it talks about right for minorities which the pm has criticized as saying we can manifesto we speaks the language of division divisive in nature and that of muslim league which has of course outraged rahul gandhi as well as the congress party i wish he was outraged much before these matters were put in into his manifesto if he was truly outraged i think he had not even seen the draft of the manifesto which was finalized later so to be outraged after you release it is rather late in the day much water has flowed under the bridge he should have seen the draft and said no i shall not approve this just as the ordinance when manmohan singh prime minister was outside the country he tore it saying no i don't want this he should he tear should he not tear the manifesto now so uh, outrage is apart right to work right to something else also looking at uh, giving uh, women some kind of a support all this my first question is mahalakshmi scheme yes my first question is they were in power in rajasthan they are in power in himachal pradesh they are in power in karnataka why are they not showing it there should they not have that done there implement it there to show it and then say very successful people appreciate it therefore i want it at the national level so it's all right to put it there knowing very well they stand no chance to win this election and create a uh, kind of impression among people to say oh the i would have given you all this had you only erected me look at the way the indi alliance is decrying everything to do with the uh, hindus look at the way they are talking against sri ram temple they don't want to attend it look at the way at uh, the various uh, ways in which the atrocities which are happening in bengal are not even been condemned you want an alliance but yet you don't know how to handle it look at the way every state is doing its own and in in uh, vinad where rahul gandhi is contesting you have one of the alliance partner themselves india alliance partner in themselves contesting 
So you don't think the India front can be an alternative or even a threat or a challenge to the NDA? I don't. Three fifty power or four hundred power is feasible. I don't think they are a challenge. They are a challenge. However, every election is a serious matter for BJP. We will have to take every challenge at the state level and at the national level seriously and address them. And that is why we want our campaign to be a lot more uh, robust, reach to every section of our society, and talk to them about the difficulties. Like the way I wanted to hear about the women in the ground who need to tell us as to what are the difficulties they are facing. I want the Indian Alliance to say, are they all together in this? Are they giving a uh, dikawa that they are all together, whereas they have different fights in different corners? Mamta Banerjee did not even get informed about Rahul Gandhi's Bharat Jodo Yatra, but you entered Bengal. So where are you together? Okay, a couple of two, three questions before I let you go because I know you're very busy in the campaign trail. The caste census, what do you feel about that? That's clearly the fulcrum of Rahul Gandhi's thinking. You agree with this? Because he says, Doot ka doot, pani ka pani ho jayega if the Congress comes to power and go to do a caste census in every field, industries, media and so on. So, in other words, when the country is looking up to developing fast and the benefits of the development reach every citizen, like the way you heard people from backward regions and also um, scheduled castes and scheduled tribes say that they are benefiting from all the schemes of the government. The aim is not to reach out to people irrespective of their castes. The aim is to go on perpetrating this narrative saying, oh, there is this backwardness which needs to be addressed only which comes out of a caste census, while Prime Minister Modi is saying, Look, if I address women, every caste gets included in that. Scheduled tribe, scheduled caste, OBC, women all come into that category. If I address youth and give them solutions, every section, scheduled caste youth, scheduled tribe youth, minority youth, for um, uh, OBC youth, all come into that. Farmers, you address a farmer, you deal with every backward area and also the rural area people of all castes. So while she is trying to build an India where everybody will have to benefit, no, we are talking about caste only because I want to keep the difference alive and make sure that because of differences, I will have my one section of vote bank continuously polarized to be with me. That's a very negative way of thinking about making difference to the Indian society. So we also talk at a time when you have K. Kavita behind bars, you have Arvind Kejriwal behind bars, and the entire India front is saying, and this again is a part of the Congress manifesto, a review of the electoral bonds issue, a review of the money which will be available with the BJP. And the fact is that your government uses or misuses the, B the EDCBI to target the political opponents. Also, do you think the Chief Minister or Delhi Chief Minister should step down and instead operating from behind bars? First of all, uh, Pallavi, where was CBI during UPI, UPA rule? It was described as a caged parrot. CBI or Enforcement director, Directorate or any of the investigative enforcement authorities were all curtailed completely. They were hands tied, feet tied, and clearly instructed not to move forward at all. And I would very clearly, with the benefit of hindsight, tell you, they were kept so because had they been given their due freedom to operate independently without political interference, the first people to be targeted would be those in power. Those in power. Because you had a scam per day, big ticket scam coming out every day. So they knew if only they are given the independence, the first of the lot would be their own ministers sitting and it is not in the opposition. Now the caged parrot under Prime Minister Modi is given its own independence, the due independence which an enforcement agency should have. So obviously they are going where they smell something uh, wrongdoing. And unfortunately, it's all where it is, you're finding it. And that is why I say when the ED or when the CBI go and do a survey or a search, they don't come empty-handed. They come with enough proof to say they went with credible information to act on. It might be very well that today many of the cases which were 
initially started by the UPA are the ones we are dealing with now. They are coming to fruition now. And the Delhi CM, you think it's okay to work from behind bars? Uh, he says I, the laws don't uh, stop him from doing so. Of course, laws don't stop him from uh, doing so. Laws also didn't expect the chief minister to be behind bars after eight summons were rejected by him. So there is actually our constitution makers were so good in trusting the, uh, the in good faith people who will come to public service. They didn't think that people who reach these high offices are going to be people who will be put to jail and there will be a constitutional question of whether you can be a chief minister functioning from behind the bars. So the makers had faith in us. We are probably betraying the faith. And electoral bonds. Very quickly, two last questions. Electoral bonds. You, much has been uh, politics done over it. But your part government, your party is being attacked for actually using the electoral bonds to ensure you, BJP makes the money and the opposition parties don't make the money. And they say that you people actually have a quid pro quo. You know, you took money in terms of electoral bonds and you've actually given benefits to industry. Electoral bonds was a law made through the parliament. It was accepted that this would be better than what was prevailing earlier. What was prevailing earlier was free for all. Anyone could carry a bag full of cash, a bori full of cash, or a suitcase full of cash and not say where he earned it from, but give it to the political party and the political party could be happily spending it all. The intent of Arun Jaitley and Prime Minister Modi at that time was to at least bring in some kind of clear bank account driven system wherein only white money will come into politics. So the bond issuer and the bond beneficiary both had money going into the account. So it went into the account, the bond uh, placing person, the industry or whoever, and the beneficiary, the political party, put it in the account. Today, the Supreme Court in its wisdom says, well, this is not right. We'll follow it. Last question, Robert Vadra or Rahul Gandhi from Amethi? Um, You must tell me one thing. I'm told, and this is uh, just the uh, buzz in the town, that he wouldn't announce his candidature in Amethi before the polling is completed in Wynard because he doesn't want the people of Wynard to think, oh, well, he's not going to be here. We may as well give it to somebody else. And after that, he's going to smartly, within quotes, announce that he is going to MIT. So confirm that for me. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for taking time out. And thank you very much. Lovely sipping this wonderful coconut water from here. Thank you very much for speaking. Sir.